you could see that in the reviews. Like when we were reading these reviews, we're like, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. And so we're like, wow, just let's open up the funnel on him. Like he's, he's right at the top and he literally just, yeah, like surpassed everything. I could have, you know, even done myself. It was just like, wow. What were you doing, man? How did you make an impact on people like this? Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is the Medicare Masterclass podcast. We understand that the Medicare industry can get lonely. You know, there's not a lot of people to bounce ideas off of, not a lot of people to train with, get better with. So uh, that's the goal with this platform is to create an environment where newer agents, veteran agents, everybody can come here and get advice from some of the top performers in the industry. Uh, my name is Rob. I'll be co-hosting the show with the expert in the field, Ashley Van Gundy. Ashley, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Amazing, amazing. We have a rock star of a guest with us today, and he goes by the name of Tyler. Tyler, how are you? I'm doing well. I'm happy to be here. Amazing, amazing. And you are a team member, right, with Ashley? Correct. Awesome, awesome. Give us a uh, a little a little background here. How did you how did you guys come together? Um, before I worked for Ashley, um, we pretty much ran in the same friend group, so we've known each other for I'd probably say about five years before I actually worked for her. Okay. Um, you know, so we had a little bit of a relationship before I came to work here, which is which is nice because getting to know Ashley is a big part of the reason that I wanted to work here in the first place, just because of who she is. Oh, so. thanks, Tyler. <laughs> there you go. Um, yeah, we were him at, um, at Lowe's, and I was with my fiance, and he had um, just gotten laid off from a job that he was really excelling at, and we were like, oh my gosh, Tyler is like available he's not working right now and we were just like wow maybe out uh, jesse afterwards was like maybe he would want to do medicare like he would be phenomenal and then that's kind of like where the conversation started and yeah that's awesome that is sweet wow that's a that's a pretty cool thing like you get off of one place and then you have that type of reputation where people are like man we gotta we gotta get him that type of thing yeah cool it was it was a good Sure. Yeah, yeah. So what were you doing before you uh, got into the space? Um, so I used to manage a biochemistry lab. So something totally different wow. than doing, you know, <laughs> Medicare and, and insurance. Um, and, biochemistry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Essentially, long story short, um, you know, after COVID and everything happened, they ended up backing up our Colorado branch and, and moving it out to California where their, their main base was. And uh, I really didn't want to move. So... So I ended up laid off from, from there, but jumped into better opportunities for myself. So yeah, so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. That is uh really cool. What was, so you were brand new to insurance in general, not just Medica. I mean, biochemistry. Yeah. That's pretty when, wild. Yeah. When I switched, it was um, kind of nerve wracking, to be honest with you, you know, for a couple of reasons, uh, a career is totally different mm -hmm. coming from being just I'll call myself a nerd, you know, <laughs> and it looks like myself to um, a sales gig, which is something that I've done before. But, uh, you know, I'm used to being the guy that everyone comes to for knowledge and everything and being in the same field and switching it up. I was the low guy on the totem pole. I didn't know anything. And, you know, I'm the kind of person that's hard on myself for that. Like, I, I want to be the knowledgeable person. Of course. So it was, it was a little tough and challenging. Um, and that's what kind of why I'm excited to be here is, you know, Medicare Masterclass is something that, that helped me in the beginning of my journey to kind of learn and build that pathway of things that I needed to do to become successful. So and apparently I did great for them. Yeah. AAP, so it's what works. That's awesome. Yeah. We're, we're going to uh, dive into, to all that stuff. How, how long have you uh, been there so far? Was it August? Yeah. It's been like six, so six, crazy. seven months now total. Yeah. So, and, and counting AUP. Yeah. So, I mean, before AUP, what was it? Two months? Yeah. It was like before? two months. Yep. All I did was yeah. stick my nose in the books for two months and jump right into AUP. Yeah. And we had just gotten done with Medicare Masterclass. And like we talked about in the last podcast, like I had gone through 
a big, you know, changing season in my business with just, you know, having staff <coughs> turnover, things like that. And so I was like in a state when he was studying and stuff like that, he got right on the Medicare masterclass after we made it. And then I was like stressed out. And so I was trying to like maneuver, figure out how I was going to like navigate all of this. And so honestly, like there's probably no way I could have given you like the time and the support that like he really needed to get to where he was, where Medicare masterclass, like having that done. Um, and he also was another agent had started about the same time, did the same thing. And they just like brainstormed and would talk about like the different things that they were going through in the Medicare masterclass. And it was like he just surpassed my expectations. I knew he was a phenomenal person and I knew that his personality would be, um, you know, good at this, but I didn't realize like to the level. Cause like, it's, I mean, he's just been amazing. Like, yeah. I think, well, how much did you do? Um, right under 300. For AAP. Yeah. So I did more than I did. Um, so our top person, um, that's a seasoned agent that's been here a while. He, he did, um, what, 10, 15 more than you? Yeah. yeah 12. 12. I know this. I, was, I, was, oh, I wanted it. I wanted it. Yeah. And so I, I, I mean, I was hoping, I was like, oh, I hope that Tyler can do a hundred and like leading up to it. He's just so like, he said, just like hungry for knowledge. And I think like, that's something to like. He was asking, you know, like when I'd see him, he'd ask me certain questions or they would be like him and the other guy would be like talking about Medicare Masterclass and what they were learning. Um, but he's always just like wanting to know more. And then once he gets it, like during AEP, he did, you know, come in and ask me some stuff. But I was just so shocked at how like you already knew that. And I was like, yeah, I was in Medicare Masterclass. I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot that. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. So I'm trying to, uh, to track this. So you're in biochemistry. You have to take a different route. You get with Ashley. Two months later, you roll into AAP and you submit just under 300 policies. So it sounds a little, a little crazy. Yes, no, yeah. that is. I mean, that is what happened. That's insane. But the thing is, though, like for those two months, it was crazy. Right, it was absolutely. So that's what I was going to ask. So those first couple months, obviously, you're you're doing the training, right? You you have to really figure it out. Um, what what was that like? What did you have any big challenges when you're starting with the learning curve? Did you have any triumph where you're like? Was there a point where you're like, I got this, you know? Um, I would definitely say that I was, I was nervous. Like I said, it was a little nerve wracking, totally switching fields. Um, I had to kind of take a, a check to my ego, so to speak, and be able to ask questions right. coming from the guy that was the boss that everyone came to now being the one that has to ask the questions, you know, it's easy to feel like you're being annoying or bugging someone. So that was definitely challenging, but at least for me personally. Right. Um, but that's why the masterclass helps so much is I can be like, Oh, you know, I, you know, I think we covered that. I can go back and look through things. And, you know, if there was something that maybe I wanted like essential details and stuff like that, cause that's the kind of person I am. I like scenarios come up in my head and I'm like, but what if, how about <laughs> if this, and this? You know, uh, I probably got a little annoying with that. I'm not going to lie just to know everything. I was like, but, Oh, he doesn't ask as many questions during any AP. No, I'm just <laughs> Uh, you know, for the most part, having the resources that I was blessed to have really, really helped me um, in that two months just to build the foundation of knowledge that helped me succeed. Awesome. Yeah. And um, the the training is is obviously crucial because you have to, to learn the industry, learn the product. Um, but just from what we've been talking about so far, were you ever in like a, a sales role or no? Cause you seem like you kind of have that type of where you can, uh, you know, talk fast and kind of get it together quick. Like, is that something that's just always came to you or did you find it going into this role? 
How does that work? Um, I have, I have done sales before. Um, I used to manage a chain of supplement stores when I was in like the fitness industry and, and things of that nature, you know, so I had stores that I would manage in, in Vegas and, you know, Colorado and some other places that I travel around to. Um, and the really nice thing about having that background is at least when it started, it was truly a help people, right? So people would come in and their mission was to, you know, lose weight or build muscle or, you know, things that really can affect their lives. So it was a wonderful sales job to have because there was no pressure, right? Truly helping people out. Um, so that's where I kind of like built that foundation. And that's why I'm so keen on having the knowledge for it. Cause the more knowledge you have, that was the better I could help people. Yeah. Right? Understanding all those situations. Um, so that was a really good foundation for me here. Um, little, little side note is I gave Jesse and Ashley the runaround for probably, probably a month when they first wanted me to come on because that job didn't end great when it switched management, it turned into a sell and push stuff on people versus help people. That's why I got out. Um, so getting back into a sales gig, you know, I was a little nervous. I was like, well, you know, what's, what's our main motive here? What's going on? I think we had like three or four, you know, interviews where I'm like just picking their brains. And one thing that stuck with me is every time I would ask a question and, and Ashley would answer it, it was always to the chime of do what's best for the client. Right. So it was, more what I'm comfortable with of we are actually here to help people. So, you know, that really connected with me and, and ultimately why I came on. So because it connected all the way back to my original sales experience where helping people is easy, right? Of course. So, yeah, I think uh, when you have that as a foundation where you, you just want to do what's best for the client, you know, you, you can, some positive things really come out of that. And I love how you said, that the more knowledge you had, the more confident you were, because I like to imagine kind of like a teeter totter with skill on one side and doubt on the other. And the, the less skill you have, the more doubt you have, and you're worried about what questions they're going to ask and you kind of panic and get frantic, but the more skill you have, the more you train, you get better, you learn your product, the less doubt you have. So, uh, you know, you, you can crush it from there. So walk me through AP. You, you did, Close to 300 policies. Let's go month by month. Did you start off on fire or was it slow and, and you just recouped at the end? How did that go? So I'll start, I'll start a little pre AEP okay. <clears throat> because obviously coming into this being new, everyone talks about AEP and oh man, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be busy. There's going to be people waiting in the lobby. You know, it's, it's every hour on the hour. And I'm like, no, they're, they're <laughs> exaggerating. It's not, it's not going to be that bad. Like you guys are crazy. Um, you know, coming into my first couple weeks weren't quite as quick paced just cause it was right at the beginning. Um, and I'll always refer back to me trying to compete with Will, uh, just as a friendly competition. Cause I knew what a rock star he was. And I was like, I'm going to hold myself to that standard. Yeah. I was like, I don't think anyone else is, but I'm going to hold myself to that standard. Um, you know, so I, I, I did well, but I didn't hit the ground running, so to speak. For that first week or two. Um, but after that, I think Ashley and Jesse kind of saw my, my success that I was having with the clients that were coming in, you know, so my schedule opened up a little bit more and I got more and more clients. And, uh, from that point, it was, uh, every hour on the hour for like 12 hours a day. Man. So it would, and this is, you know, six days a week, sometimes seven days a week. Um, so it was, 12 hour, 14 yeah, hour days, 12 it was, hour days. it was insane. Yeah. Yeah. The way we kind of structure our office too is so like when we have people inbound calls, people calling wanting help, we want to make sure to like prioritize that appointment with the one that's most likely going to be able to help them and make the sell. And so, you know, Will was somebody and then Tyler really kind of like we call him, you know, five star, five star for a reason. He, we call Will at Medicare Machine, mm -hmm. but um, we call him the five star because like we just started noticing like, like literally <coughs> we should have just named our Google like Tyler's Review fan page because <laughs> like, we're like, what is he doing? And like, it was so funny because his, um, I would walk by his office and his door would be open. He could like clearly see me, but when the individual was sitting across from him talking, he was so like 
so focused in on like what they were saying and just being so genuine and caring. And honestly, that just like, you could see that in the reviews. Like when we were reading these reviews, we're like, Tyler, Tyler, Tyler. And so we're like, wow, just let's open up, let's open up the funnel on him. Like he's, he's right at the top and he literally just, yeah, like surpassed everything I could have, you know, even done myself. It was just like, wow. Yeah. That's awesome. For, for me, you know, we talked about like how did AEP go? Obviously if we were to quantify it, it, the numbers look good, but you know, for me personally, seeing that the quality was also there and just, the overwhelming response from people um, was really what made me think that I, I did well. Um, when you get like a handwritten note from someone that thanks you, oh, wow. like it, it shows that you actually made a difference for them. You know what I mean? Like you did something important for them. And like, I think that's like the biggest thing, like all through AP, something like that would happen. It's just like an instant recharge to the battery, you know? Right. So, you know. Wow. Yeah, he was getting good dropped off and all kinds of stuff like hey were you just wanted to bring this for Tyler <laughs> that's awesome so what were you doing man how did you make an impact on people like this um you know we mentioned it before but I think a big part of it is is truly to listen to everyone right so like everyone's situation that they're currently facing is truly different um you know and that's the, the nice thing with us working with so many different plans is if someone comes in with a certain situation, you have so many weapons, so to speak, that you can use to truly help benefit them, whether it's covering a prescription better or, you know, certain doctors or surgeries, you know, that may be coming up on the horizon. That knowledge base, you know, gives me the ability to look at all these plans in the background of my head and be able to be like, oh, well, this and this is coming up and, and this plan is definitely going to be better than what you have going on currently. You know, we can save you, whether it be thousands or, or whatever it is. Um, so listening to people is, is kind of like the first key, just because everyone's situation can be different. Um, the second part is, I would say, going back to just talking about caring about people. You know, like people can really sense if you're trying to just sell them something, right? Um, you know, and be that kind of person or if you're truly just listening to them and caring about what they say and having, you know, positive conversations with them, they can pick up on that, you know, and, and if they trust you, they feel more comfortable, you feel more comfortable and you can kind of make a relationship that way. Um, so I'd say those are kind of the, the three things for me would be listen to people, have the knowledge to help them and then have the genuine care for people that you can do what's right by them. I'd say those are the three big things. Awesome. Listen, no care. That's what I wrote down in my notes here. Cool. Do you guys know how many reviews like you actually got or? I have no idea. We haven't gone through and counted them, but <laughs> so we can count them. Um, we have a couple locations. So this location that we're at now is our newer one. And um, it, we had started it in August, September. Actually, September, we started actually getting like Google reviews. And I know we have like 250 now. I mean, wow. and that was like September. So, um, yeah, I, I would say probably half of those, and we are for uh, Tyler. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome, man. That is awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I want to get into kind of what the the biggest lessons you learned was, but. Before we, we go there, um, I feel like I, I still, I can't picture how the entire AAP went. So the first couple of weeks kind of getting in rhythm and then did it like, did you just have a couple of weeks where it was all rolling in or was it really consistent? I mean, 12 hours a day, back to back appointments. If someone thinks they're working hard and they're tired, you should probably go check out Tyler, but, um, yeah. So, so how did like walk me through month by month or week by week, how did the entire thing go? Did you ever catch a break or was it just nonstop? Um, I caught a break around December 8th. So when everything was over, <laughs> um, so I guess the, the first couple of weeks, um, like I said, we're, 
really just kind of opening my eyes and, and getting set to realize truly what the AEB was and what the workload was going to be. Um, but after, after that, it was truly consistent all the way through to the very last day. Um, you know, that's when I started adding in, you know, seven days a week and bump it up to, you know, maybe 14 hours, maybe 15 hours. Um, you'd be making phone calls for, for people that need assistance, you know, at eight o'clock at night, nine o'clock at night. Like, right. uh, but it was, it was definitely consistent all the way through. Um, and we, we have a couple different offices. So I was also going up to Montrose, traveling to different offices as well. And I think the thing that really helped me a lot that I haven't mentioned yet either is when you form that relationship with someone, they're going to want to refer you to friends and family, right? right. So when that happens, you know, you have people calling in and it's like, Hey, um, so-and-so said they spoke to Tyler. I definitely want to see Tyler. So it kept my books just totally full to where I'm opening up new spots on calendars to feed people in and, you the know, last but, day, I think we were doing what 30 minute, 15 minute. I don't know. It was something crazy because like we were already completely booked out right. the day before the seventh. And we had like not one agent on our team had an opening. So we were like, all right, we got to go to like 30 minutes. And then, wow. then we booked all of that up. So it was just like, and then we're like, all right, we're taking a lit, like a backup list. We <laughs> will call you. It may be 11 p.m., but we will call you today. It ended up being like 36 appointments in one day. Yeah. yeah. We sold 70, 70 something in a day as a team. One day, it was like, I don't even know. It was crazy. Yeah, that's just crazy. I mean, I'm in, uh, you know, a lot of the Medicare Facebook groups and stuff like that. And there's some engagement where, Agents will say kind of how much they're selling throughout the year. And, um, you know, a lot of people are doing like 10 apps a month, right? Like a hundred a year. And then when they get into AEP, they're able to put out 50 to a hundred, but you know, obviously you guys are crushing that doing, doing something right for sure. So, and I think too, like with what Tyler said is, you know, you have to have like the, your heart in the right place. I really do think that because I think you're, you being genuine and like truly caring about people, it like, it gives a different feeling. It doesn't feel transactional. It feels like this person really cares because we, we really do care. Um, and we try to learn about other resources too in the community. So when people have an issue it's not like, you know, if they're telling us that, you know, they can't afford food some months, like we, we know food pantries, like we know of resources for them. And, and I think when you go into it with that approach and like, that's where your heart's at, like you're going to get back more because you're doing the right thing. And I've had people come in that have other friends or, or other people they know that do Medicare and they've decided to work with our agency because they just didn't really feel heard by the person that they were talking to that, Oh, you're fine. Or, Oh yeah. And what it really like look into their situation, um, to try to help them because some of them are easy, you know, like, Hey, this is a really easy sell or maybe the person already knows kind of what they want. And then some of them, huh? I mean, we're dealing with some right now that it's like, we're having to do this SEP to loop them back into this and then use this SEP the following month and like trying to keep all of these things organized. And then it's almost like, yeah. it's not really in a way it's like, it's not really worth it when you look at the workload, but when you look at the experience that you're creating and like right. genuinely helping someone where other people would maybe be like, no, nah, that's a, that's too much work. I'm just going to Doing pass that. the right thing for someone isn't always the easiest thing. That's, yeah. that's for sure. But they definitely can see and appreciate when they realize how much hard work goes into it. Yeah. So. And people remember that when you look out for them, even if it's, uh, you know, a little, like a lot of work, people remember that. And, and they, they tell people about that. So, um, cool, cool. I was, I had a question right on the, the tip of my tongue that I was going to ask about this stuff, but, um, <laughs> My bad. No, no, all good. Oh, this is what I was going to say. With the market, the market, the Medicare market, I mean, being 
not being transactional is huge because they come from a time where, you know, there's nothing of what we have today. Everything, like you had no choice but to do everything in person. And the thought of calling somebody or doing anything like that, it just wasn't an option. So I think when your heart is in it and they sense that, because they can read that pretty well, I would think, um, that it, it makes a, a huge difference. So um, what do you think your biggest takeaways are after your first AEP and after doing what you did? I would say my, my biggest takeaways, you know, goes back into that everyone's situation is different, right? Um, one of the most common questions I got is just, hey, what's the best plan? And I hate that question. Mm-hmm. Absolutely hate that question. Um, you know, because it truly is different for everyone. You know, one company might have something to offer that's wonderful for someone's situation versus someone else comes in that's on a specific medication that, you know, they need a different plan. Um, so it kind of goes back to the making sure that we listen to people, you know, because that really helps guide us to what is going to help them the best. I would say that's the biggest takeaway that I had is just there is no one best, right? It is truly a case by case situation. And as long as you're listening to that individual, then you're going to be right by. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's powerful right there. What's the the best plan? Because um, people talk about that. You know, they they talk about how certain things are better than others. But um, I love that everybody's different. Everybody's situation is different. Um, cool, cool. Was there any? Was there anything that happened? Uh, of course, it was your first AEP, so everything was a little unexpected. But was there anything that that really, really shocked you outside of the workload? I mean, that I think would would shock anybody. But in your interactions with with people, was there something where you're like, "Man, I wasn't expecting that." Um, I don't know if it's necessarily tied to just AEP, but truly just how complicated Medicare can be for individuals, Mm -hmm. you know, is is quite shocking. Um, Trying to navigate everything that's out there pertaining to Medicare is challenging for me, right? And I'm I'm making a career out of this and it's still challenging for me, right? (laughs) So, you know, for an individual that, that turns 65 and it's like, okay, it's time to set up Medicare, you know, you might get like a 200 page book from CMS that just confuses them more than helps them. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so that was a little shocking at just how confusing and how confused everyone is about their Medicare. Um, you know, so that's an important part about having that knowledge is just being able to break that knowledge down in a way for people that is very easy to understand just because there is so much, um, uh, is truly beneficial. But I would definitely say just the, the sheer amount of rules and in state programs that can be in the background. And, you know, it just, it can get very overwhelming very quick. This could change people. this yeah, exactly. and that could change that. It's like you have like the basics and then it's just like these roots that go out and it's like these little trails that, I mean, I, I'm still learning, which I guess is kind of cool because it's like, It's not just something that you just stop learning. It's always changing and you're always like getting different situations that you've never had before. You're like, oh, I would think that I've seen every situation, but then, you know, something happens and then you see something new and you're like, okay, well, how do we deal with this? Well, every year it changes too, right? Yeah. As soon as you know everything and you think you're golden, just kidding. New year rolled around, all the plans changed. Here we go all over again. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that stuff is is crazy. Medicare is is one of the uh, most interesting industries because of that reason. Everything changes. So, um, yeah, it's not like you can just do your continuing education one time or get licensed one time. It's you're kind of like relearning everything. Exactly like you said. What are some of your like big picture goals? I mean, you came in crushed it. You're still learning, still new, of course. So what, what's kind of in the plans for you? I think my goals, my goals always shift, right? Um, just as I, as I learn and change as an individual, my goals are always changing. Um, especially like my role in, in a company, my goals can change. I think, you know, currently the, the biggest thing 
that I want to see in the future is to see 970 Medicare continue to expand. Like we have, we have locations now and we're getting to the point where they, each location brings a, a clientele. And as soon as you have that clientele and, and they trust you and you're helping everyone, you know, I want to see us branch out to, to more regions and more locations and, and essentially copy and replicate what we've done in Junction and Montrose um, just so we can reach more people, you know, um, might sound kind of corny or generic, but I, I truly feel like we do help people and it, it needs to be spread out more. Um, you know, so I think, I think that's my goal is, is through some administrative stuff and everything kind of help Ashley and Jesse be able to focus on, on spreading out more, you know, whether it be me holding down the fort or, or helping expand or whatever it may be. But I, I think that's kind of what our, our future should hold. Yeah, so on a side note too, I guess kind of to backtrack. So when we we knew Tyler had management experience just from, you know, the sales job when he was doing like running some supplement stores and then when he was doing the biochemistry and being management there. And so we knew he had a strong background in management and our agency was kind of at that place where, you know, me and Jesse were doing the management stuff and it was starting to become quite a bit. And honestly, I'm not going to lie, I'm not, I'm not the greatest manager. So um, it's not like something that is like natural or really in my, my wheelhouse. I'm very much like, I don't know what you would call it, but I am. Um, so we had told him before, like, Hey, like we see this potential in you already as a person. And obviously you've excelled in this. Um, but we just need to see that you can like sell policies, right? Because if we're going to have like, want you to be the manager, um, you know, then we need to see that you can also sell. And I mean, obviously he blew that out of the park, but watching him too, just in the office and the culture he was cultivating and the environment of like inclusivity and like just making everybody feel important. And he's just like somebody that, is so genuine and like just like caring and wants to share knowledge and it was just like oh my gosh like is this like is he even real <laughs> like this is thank god my prayers have been answered but um so he's actually um we offered him the management position in january oh, wow. um and he's now our manager <clears throat> and so i think that just goes to show you too like if you're somebody that from if you have the passion and the desire and you apply yourself, I mean, really you can turn your career into whatever um, you want it to be, you know, that it's not like, I mean, it's endless of what you can do. And I think with us and like what we do in the Medicare space and like our approach to it is like, I always say, it's like we're running a for-profit that feels like a nonprofit and I want to continue that type of business where it just, it just feels good. Like it just feels like we're just helping people. Right. But this is, we also get paid. So it's like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's definitely important. Um, cool. Yeah. I mean, when you're, what's nice about being that type of person is it rubs off on everybody else. I'm sure you guys have seen that where people come in they're like, man, this guy's crushing. I want to be more like him. And uh, then eventually when you have enough people come in and, you know, like Tyler, if he gets around enough people, then it's, it's like a virus almost, but a good one. You know, it's like you get around people and you're positive and encouraging and you want to get better and you lead by example. It's like nothing's better than that. Um, so Tyler, what, uh, let's say I'm, I'm somebody who just started, right? Let's say it's my first day on, on Ashley's team, on your guys' team, or anywhere else, right? What's, uh, what's some things that I should be focusing on? What should I keep in mind? What, uh, if you could give me a, a three-minute elevator pitch on what I need to do to be successful, what would it be? I'm formulating my answer. <laughs> 
Um, That's the biochemistry kicking in. <laughs> I, uh, I'm going to sound like a broken record, but I'll ultimately break it back down to the, to the three things that led to success for me, which of course is going to be to, A, you need to be a person that actually cares about people and wants to help. You. That's really hard to train into someone, Yeah, you know, so that might be more of something that, you know, if someone's going to get into Medicare to start with, you're going to have a much easier time and you're going to be more successful if you are a person that can genuinely care to help others. So that, that's a big one, just pre starting the job period. Right. Um, but the second one before you start, right, right. I mean, if you're doing it just for the money, you can do it and you can make some money. But if you truly want to be successful, at least in my opinion, you know, you should, you should have that care there involved as well. The second one I'm, I'm going to say is again, going to be knowledge, right? Man, there, there is so much when it comes to Medicare to, to learn and not just learn, you really have to understand because there's always an exception. There's a different rule, you know, of if this, then this, you know, um, so really, really learning and understanding, um, and asking questions, right? Like it's, it's great that, that we have this and we're creating this because one of the things for me is being able to bounce things off of Ashley or, you know, our other employee that started at the same time, we're both kind of nerds, right? So that we can talk and like, Hey man, what if this, well, what do you think about this? And he has a different take on it than, than I do. And, you know, we can come up with some pretty creative solutions, but knowledge will be a big, big, big factor in being successful at being able to help people. Um, you know, and the last ones that we can throw in there, of course, is always listen to someone. Don't go into an appointment thinking you already know what you're going to do for them or, you know, what plans the best or anything like that. It should always start with, with listening to someone, right? So you want to make sure that you, you actually hear them. So you don't want to just sit there and let them talk and you want to have a conversation. You want to ask questions, you know, things like that. Um, and He's a pro at that, <laughs> like active listening. Like literally, I mean, I'd be like, and he was, he was like, seriously, so intent on like listening. I was like, wow. Got to the point where it's like, you, you wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so, so those are definitely, definitely going to help, you know, um, taking interest in individuals and what they have going on in their life. And, you know, of course, medical concerns that they have, like these are all factors that build a, a relationship with people, you know, and, and if you can build that relationship with them, you, you're going to do great. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So really it comes down to those three for me. There's other tidbits that I can throw in there, like, Hey, time management, you know, for AAP and, and all that kind of stuff. But I feel like that's, that's more, you know, generic or applies to everything. You know, in this right. case, it's really going to be, you know, listen, learn and apply. So. Gotcha. Now I wanted to uh, ask one thing and then we'll, we'll uh, close out here to get all of the reviews with the nickname five star. Was there something you were saying? Like what's, Give us some sauce here, man. What's what's the cheat code? Did you say you're gonna get a review or no? No, no. Most of the time, I don't even mention the review to them. To be honest with you, um, huh. you know, it's it's more. I think as as I watch others and I'm trying to see that their approach and, and where I potentially can help others um, is always to highlight the positives and when something could be really beneficial for you. Also, you're going to want to highlight, you know, things that you want to watch out for, given certain situations or scenarios to where, you know, if this happens, we need to be careful because we could be looking at, you know, X, Y, Z, right. um, you know, so you always want to highlight pros, you want to highlight cons and just be just fully open with them, right? Like we're, we're dealing with insurance. It's not always going to be the most pretty thing for people. So you, you want to make sure that they have that, that understanding of, you know, here's where it can be really good for you. You know, here's maybe what we, we want to avoid, you know, all of these kind of things, you know, just with that open disclosure, it doesn't make you come off as a salesperson, right? It's, it's um, you know, this person's trying to really lay out real. everything for Being me, real. you know, yeah, to, to, to help me out, you know, and I'm going to pick, you know, what one, you know, fits best for our situation. So that's, I think going through line by line and just saying, hey, this could be good. We want to watch out for this and, and just really breaking it down. You know, not in a way that it's like, hey, yeah, you need this because this, see how good this is, this, that, you know, you, you want to be real with them. And as long as you do that, they're, they're going to pick up the check should care. And I, I think that's what leads to, you know, reviews or, or referrals, thank you cards, all that kind of stuff. So. Awesome. Awesome. What's your uh, goal for next AAP? 
I mean, can you, that's the hard part. There's, there's a lot on my plate for the next <laughs> EP now with, with uh, you know, helping others out and everything. Um, I want to break, I want to break 300 though, for sure. Yeah. Um, you know, super, super close. And it was kind of sad at the end where I just fell just a few short of actually hitting 300. And, um, it would be amazing if I could hit that just for like an internal, you know, confidence boost the saying that I did it. Um, so I think that'll be important. But now that I'm taking on more leadership, I would, you know, more like to look at just my team and, and helping them succeed. Right. The success that I found for me personally, I want that to rub off to others. Right. So if someone hit 150 last year, you know, what, what can I do to sit down with them? And, and maybe this year they hit 175, you know, maybe 200, you know, things like that. And, try to instill the, the desire to do that as well. So right. that's the challenging. Awesome. Yeah, that's definitely you know, as the challenging, you know, getting that like desire and then, you know, everybody's just different. But I think too, like the things that Tyler possesses like character wise is just, it really is like something that he's very motivational. He's very encouraging and he does have that knowledge. And so if you have something you're confused about, instead of like, go figure it out, he wants to like learn it with you if he doesn't know it. And I, I always just like found that so cool. And like something, a culture that's created from him and um, the other guy, Carl. So they like to, you know, learn all these plans and like, quote unquote, I guess like nerd out, but (laughs) yeah, they'll like share, like we have this group chat going now and they'll, they'll share on there. Like, Hey, da, 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 we just found this out just, so you know, so it's like before in my office, um, it's always been the same like culture and I guess the same values, you know, of wanting to care for people. And I feel like everyone's always done that, but we didn't have that where it was like, Hey, let's share, let's share our knowledge Sometimes it was kind of like, well, I'm a little bit better than you because I'm this status, you're this status. And that's something as a, as a manager, business owner, I wasn't always the best at like navigating conflict. Like I don't like conflict. I want to just everyone get along. Let's love each other. <laughs> but sometimes like be able to like break that. And I feel like that's something that he's done just naturally, which is crazy. Like just brought people together, brought out people that are introverted to like, be sharing and ideas and like sharing what they're learning. And it's, it's literally revitalizing for me because it's hard when you're dealing with like negative situations over and over. It's like, why am I doing this? This is crazy. I'm, you know, (laughs) he's been a huge, a huge blessing. We're just so excited. Awesome. Awesome. Well, Tyler, five star. It's been an absolute pleasure. Um, you crushed it, man. Thank you for, for coming on the show. Um, Ashley, any closing thoughts here? No, other than, you know, I hope, I, I feel like I got a lot out of this. So <laughs> um, hopefully everyone else does too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I have a, a few notes here. I mean, if you think you're working hard until you're doing back-to-back appointments for 12, 14 hours a day, like Tyler and, and Ashley and them are doing, you know, you, you can probably squeeze a little more in there. Uh, listen, know, and care in no particular order, or maybe. Um, but, yeah, I mean, to see someone go from biochemistry, completely different industry, to come in and crush it, he has the right characteristics. Um, got on a proven process, obviously, and uh, ripped it. So thanks, man, for hopping on. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right, cool. Don't forget, subscribe to the channel.